it's been really hard to find any interviews with you. Shit, I, I feel like I do tons of press. Really? It, but I, well, my thing is, is that I, I'm not a, I do press as it pertains to my job. You know, like we got a film, we have a project or something like that. There's tons of stuff out there and I do them all the time, but it's almost always project specific. I don't ever really feel like I got anything going on in my day to day that's all that interesting. And I'm not somebody that feels the need to put my stuff out there. I'm a pretty private person. Um, and so I, I'm never going to seek out an interview to be like, I feel, I feel like people need to hear from me. They haven't in a while. I'm like, no, nah, they, they really don't. You know, we'll, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, well, thanks I'll for work. sitting down with me. I appreciate it. I'll make it. a thing and they can watch, they can see that or they can watch that. That's as, that's as in-depth as I get. Yeah. Well, the, the good news is, is that my podcast really is nothing to do with like your entertainment work. That's good. Um, it really um, is for, you know, celebrities um, to is talk about the things they do. I know. And I didn't even want to use that word in this conversation because I knew it would probably make you uncomfortable. I've seen those. I did watch your interview with Paul Green or your conversation yeah. about a year ago with him. I was actually just watching it before we jumped on here. And, um, I know, so I know how you feel about the whole, like people want my autograph, like their pictures. No, well, my, it, it doesn't make me uncomfortable per se. I just don't know that, uh, that, that, I, I don't know that I apply that word to myself, but yeah, I mean, I, it happens, I guess. Self-deprecating. So, that word came that, up a lot. That is definitely, I am definitely that. All right. Well, we're going to talk about your jewelry today. Okay. Can do we're that. Talk about motorcycles. Is that okay? I like those. I have a bunch of those. I know you do. I know. I grew up around motorcycles. My dad, big Harley guy. I love um, him. I am on my fifth Harley now. Nice. I've been, I still have two. There's still two. Yeah, two. Two. Okay. I had a bunch. I sold yeah. them. Yeah. Um, I know you have I hit money. my car about a month and a half ago and one got destroyed and I had to replace that one. So motorcycles are dangerous, man. Yeah, they can be. I'm actually, I live uh, right outside of West Palm. Um, okay. So, so I'll see you at Rama Drama. Yeah, well, I keep trying to tell them we got to line up a bike thing. Uh, yeah, give me, a, give me a big bike and we'll do some stuff. Yeah, it's fun. really, it's really great place to ride down here. Um, That's beautiful. My dad, uh, my dad's on this sort of like retirement trip of his life right now. He's got a fifth wheel trailer and a truck, no permanent address, and he just kind of drifts. My dad's a big fly fisherman. Um, and he just goes all over the country fishing and stuff like that. And I think right now is somewhere in between Arkansas and Florida because he kind of snowbirds down there. So he'll spend the springtime up and down between the Miami and the Keys or, or Orlando and the Keys. I usually fly into Orlando and rent a bike and ride down just because it's pretty, you know, it's, yeah. it's a nice ride. Right. So I'll take like an early flight so that I can get there early enough that I can do the riding during the daytime. Yeah. It's a little dark on the intercoastal. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, not a lot uh, of lights. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, it's beautiful. Beautiful, especially when it's warm. Oh man, I love that. My favorite kind of riding. Yeah, it's yeah, warm and humid. A little humid down here, but it's nice. Yeah, but that's nice all right, water. man. That's yeah, okay. it's the tropics. And so what do yeah. you, you know? That's what you get, right? Yeah. That's what you get. All right. Well, let's let's talk about your jewelry because I used to make jewelry. Yeah. And so it really interests me, especially like, like the work that you do with your rings. Um, because I've never, I, that's one thing I've never made as a ring. I, I've done bracelets and, and yeah. stuff like that. And so I just, cause I think, and you talked a little bit about this on the IG live that you just did is that people don't really realize like what goes into making a yeah. ring. Like you're not going to like michael's craft store and buying like the base no. of the ring to glue the stone in and like i think no. people just don't understand you know what it entails no, and what they, it's about. they don't they don't for the most part and and i deal with that a lot in in the company email where people will attack 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 and i you know i have a number of thoughts about about the jewelry business and and forgive me if it turns into a rant oh, but fine. um People don't understand the amount of time and energy and effort and stuff like that that goes into it. Sourcing good stones. Um, I get all my metals from a website called Rio Grande. It's a big uh, jewelry supplier for North America, really. They're great. So at least I've got metals handled. 
Um, but to find really good stones, to find good tools, to learn how to use them takes time. You know, I, I'll, I'll spend all day long on a ring. And then sometimes I'll get to the end of a day where like it literally, maybe I screwed up a couple of times and I had to rework this portion and then I fixed it and I did this blah, 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 blah. I made some mistakes that grew the amount of time required to make the ring. I will often deduct labor hours from a ring's cost because I'll, I'll look at it. I have an equation that I plug it into that accounts for the cost, my cost of the stone, right. my cost of the metal and the number of man hours. I don't pay myself an exorbitant hourly, uh, hourly rate. Um, you know, everybody's like, oh, it's just because you're on TV. I'm like, honey, if I may, if I charged you for my jewelry, would they pay me for films? You'd yeah. never, you'd never buy anything like that. No, I don't. I very early on, I followed a bunch of jewelry forums to learn everything about it as a business and a big hot ticket discussion item in these forums is pricing your work. It's really difficult to price a painting because a lot of people, you know, they, they come up with like the recipe. Well, the canvas costs $46 for a big canvas and the right. paint over here, we used a bunch of different paint that was maybe $35 worth of paint. So like, why is the painting a thousand dollars? And I was just like, well, here's the thing. You can buy the paint and the canvas and then go and combine them yourself. If you cannot, that's why you're here. So paintings are difficult. Jewelry is a little bit easier just because metals have a price. You know, you can always check. Silver, I think, is like 23 bucks an ounce right now, yeah. um, which is much more expensive than it was when I first started, but not as expensive as it has been. Stones all have a price. Stones get a little tricky because you can buy cheap stones or you can buy, you can buy a cheap version of a stone or an expensive version of a stone. And a lot of people are just like, well, they're both the same rock. And I'm just like, yeah, but are they, though? They're not. Yeah. They're not, though. So those things are easy because they, they have pricing information that, that's labeled, but how to combine them was a big thing for me early on. And so I, I spoke to and, and participated in a number of discussions with a bunch of professional jewelers to see how they priced their work because it was important to me when I started this. Um, it was never supposed to be a business, but once it became one, it was important for me that people buy stuff for me because the stuff that I make appeals to them not not just because they saw me in that one movie I don't want to sell people garbage just because they're like oh well I saw him in that movie and I liked it so I'll I'll support his art it's important to me this is like a commodity you know and it and it's important to me because I like to work with my hands I put a lot of myself into that I, I'm constantly burning my fingerprints off or cutting myself or been picking little metal splinters out of my hands for five years now so pricing your stuff is is a big deal um, but I work really hard on it, you know, and I'm in my shop all day, every day. I could probably be out screwing around and riding my bikes and doing all sorts of stuff like that, but I'm not, I'm in there. I'm learning new stuff and I really enjoy it. I'll be out riding my bikes and I'll have an idea for a thing. And I'm like, ah, oh, man, I gotta go home. I want to try this thing before I forget it. I gotta, I, I gotta go. I gotta go. I'm going to go try it really fast. So, so yeah. And there is a ton of work that goes into these things. You know, I, I, I wouldn't do it if I didn't enjoy it because it's a ton of work and it hurts and it's tiring. My back hurts. My hands are on fire. Like, yeah. Is it therapeutic it. for you? It can be. It can be equal parts therapeutic or enraging. It depends. Sometimes the metal cooperates. Sometimes the metal does not cooperate and you sit there in quiet rage and you shake and you're just like, yeah. And then I got to go for a minute. <laughs> I got to walk away. And go, I don't know, yeah. go outside, go down the hall, pet a dog. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I need a minute. Uh, but for the most part, yeah. And especially when you do something, like you have an idea and you're like, I don't know if I could pull it off, but then it works. You're like, oh, yeah. like I'm pretty pumped on that mixed metals ring that I made the other day, which was pretty rad. I, I, I don't know. I like it when I make stuff. I've always enjoyed working with my hands. This is just a little different than construction, but kind of the same in some ways yeah, yeah absolutely so, so do you so i'm curious to know like when you get an idea um even if it's just like mechanical or how you're going to do something do you sketch yeah. any of this stuff out like how do you design because the the the, the <clears throat> prongs on the amber yeah. ring that you just finished like i feel like that had to have been like a like you sketched you didn't no. sketch it out you just did no, it no i never i never sketch anything i just sit so you have this there's this thing for me at least i don't know I can't, I can't speak for anybody else but over the over time over the years you develop this sort of like bag of tricks 
you know, um, and in this particular case, bag of tricks, meaning how can I secure a stone and make it look cool, secure with prongs and blah, 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 blah. Prongs, the amber ring was the first time I'd ever done prong settings. But academically, I understand how they work, you know? So I'm just like, okay, well, we'll give it a go. And you work slow and you work carefully, but there has to be a certain level of courage in that, you know, you could pump five hours into this thing and then have it fall apart at the end and then the whole thing's screwed and you're just like well that's a whole day where i contributed nothing to my next sale <laughs> um, but no as far as designing pieces go i don't sketch i know some artists who do and maybe i should maybe my work would be better if i sketched it out but i i, I don't a lot of what i make is kind of whimsical and, and improvisational and and I know that I have this bag of tricks, like I know that this stone's really thick and I have this wire over here that I could roll, I could put to my rolling mill to widen it a little bit and that'll make a really tall bezel for this stone and that would look really cool. And since it's bezel set, it's got a lot of silver around the rock. I wanna put like a hefty band with it because I don't know, I just, you have all these ideas and I'm like, all right. And then I just do them, you know, because I, I have so many stones of so much stuff. I could work in there for, ages it would take me eons to, to work through the the collection of materials i've accrued at this point um but because i have so many stones and so many things like that i i don't feel the need to like overly plan i like to kind of just dive in and see where it goes you know and i know enough about the basics that i'll i'll, I'll execute on something you know if i sit down to the bench and i i put a stone and some metal we're gonna have a piece you know, gone are the days where I would, you know, usually my mistakes these days are pretty small. Um, but in keeping with the self deprecation thing, I do kind of punish myself for my mistakes. Like if I tried to make a ring idea and I'm like, there's no way I can charge these people seven hours of labor. There's no way. I screwed up a bunch of times. We'll take like three hours off. I'll charge them for four hours of labor. So I, I, I back that out. But I don't want to put that up on the internet. Like, just so you know, you're getting a deal on this because I was mean to myself. Like, that sounds weird. Right. But a little weird. But, yeah. <laughs> but I do it because I like it. You know, I'm in there like all day long, every day. I could certainly be doing something else. Yeah. But, but so I enjoy how did it. it start? I mean, jewelry making is not like, you know, it's really, it's a it's, weird it's thing. Not, for, I mean, there's a lot of tools. There's a lot of. I mean, a you gotta, there's a lot of things you need to do it. So oh, yeah. I'm just curious, how did it? How did it, how did you start? I was on General Hospital um, and I needed a hobby, you know, I, I, a bunch of people around me were developing them. Like Kirsten was, and, and M. Ryland were big into knitting and stuff like that. And I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be knitting, um, no knock against dudes who knit, but um, I was like, I just, I don't know if that's the one for me. And I started wire wrapping. I, I saw a gal on Instagram was wire wrapping and it was a piece of Labradorite and it was green and she had aged the copper. Um, and I, at the time, I'd never seen anything like this at all or heard about it or anything. And I was just like, this is crazy. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Like very Game of thrones and you know, yeah. like it was, Labradorite is really cool, beautiful spectral stone and the green kind of gave it this like dragon's eye look. I don't know. I'd never seen anything like it. I thought it was really cool. I was like, I'm, I'm good with my hands. I could probably learn how to do that. And I did. And then, yeah, it just kind of escalated from there. I knew that metal work was really all what I wanted to do at some point. Like I wanted to make stuff that was like hardy, you know, like. Yeah. And, and I liked wire wrapping and I got relatively decent at it, but I always wanted to work in silver and make, you know, what I felt to be like, I don't know, all, all the wire wrappy stuff that no matter how good at it I got or how complicated a piece got, it always made me feel a little bit weird. Like I was just selling arts and crafts, you know, yeah. like here's a lanyard made out of metal. Right. Yeah. Uh, I see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, here's a lanyard that took me nine hours to make and the stone cost $300, but here you go. Right. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, I, silver was always something that I, that I, I wanted to work with. And there's all this cool stuff and torches and tools and anvils. And I don't know, there's something the little boy in me was just like, yes, this is the thing. And so I don't know, again, I mean, it just, it started on the soap and I, I needed something. I needed a creative outlet to, to, to some more catharsis and just evolved into this, you know, like it takes more and more, it's kind of a drug, I guess it takes more and more to get that same satisfaction. So your projects get more and more complicated and you get 
more and more specialized tools and you buy more metals and now you got an anvil and now I have a torch set up before you know it you have this like it's grown into this thing and now it's like chaotic wonderland in there there's all kinds of junk laying around everywhere but it's it's organized chaos like I kind of know I have stations where where stuff goes like forming happens over here cleaning is behind me I've got magnetic tumblers I've got rotary tumblers I've got an ultrasonic cleaner and all kinds of stuff like that ring stretchers ring compressors compression sleeves arbor press uh, pneumatic vices regular vices tanks and regulators with flashback arresters two different kinds of tanks all kinds of different tips Fifty thousand different species of pliers and hammers and dude oh my goodness did intense. you make the jewelry you're wearing i did not well sort of yes i i collaborated with an artist to make this one i made the band she made the top piece this i bought at uh, the cornell winery up in agura hills because i thought it looked really cool um uh, it's like a split ring oh yeah 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 um but i it's an idea honestly that i i wanted to try before i even saw this and then i was there buying some wine and i was like what i had a little case on the side so i'm going to start trying to like learn wax casting and and doing all kinds of stuff like that which is which is pretty rad so after my next release, we'll do another capital infusion into the business and I'll have to buy a, you know, a centrifuge or a vacuum or something like that. I think vacuum casting is probably gonna create cleaner casts than uh, using a centrifuge, take up less space too. But yeah, but you yeah we'll running see, out I don't know. Space. <laughs> I'm already running out of space, man. I, I, it is what it is, but, but it's all right. I like it because I, uh, yeah, I like it. This is gonna be a thing I do for forever. Yeah. It's funny when you talk about the people that email you, I'm assuming you get emails like, why is this so expensive? You know, why, is that like the kind of stuff that you get? Cause when I would- no, I get worse it. stuff than that. Really? I get worse stuff than that for sure. Yeah, so the soap taught me a lot of things. And one of the things that it taught me early on is, uh, you know, when I joined the soap opera, ABC mandated that we have a uh, social media presence cause I wasn't particularly active on social media. And I had to start a Twitter and do all this stuff. And then I got to learn about what that world is like. And so Twitter is a pretty disgusting place. Um, it's, uh, it can be nice, don't get me wrong. And I have met some really cool people online, but uh, it, it emboldens people to say things they would never say in real life um, because of anonymity. You know, they're, they're protected behind a keyboard and they feel justified in just lobbying attacks at you throwing stones and yada 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 um and so my emails for my company feel like that sometimes where people there's no purpose of this conversation they've just come here to pick a fight and i'm not somebody you want to pick a fight with and i'm not really interested in fighting with any of these people i i actually am really grateful that they feel bold enough to do those things because i wasn't really aware of their existence beforehand but now i am and i can make sure we never speak again it's great I'm not one of those people who can't take criticism. I'm not somebody who's going to block you just because you disagree with a viewpoint or blah, 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 blah. I don't block uh, people for asking dumb questions because I'm sorry, kids, there is such a thing as dumb questions. There are. I encourage you to ask them though, because that's how we learn, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, I do have a zero tolerance for disrespect policy. If you come here picking a fight, and I can tell that really your only intention is just a fight. I don't have time for that. We're never going to speak again. And honestly, it's kind of fun too, because nothing pisses a person who's come to piss you off more than not being able to talk to you. Right. <laughs> I'm just like, nope, doors closed. Doors yeah. closed. Don't care. Don't care. What was, oh, no, I didn't catch that. I'm sorry. I didn't. I, no, don't care. Yeah. Yeah, you're so it's uh, I've looked through your Instagram um, and it is a, just a lot of it's not a it's a lot of things that you do right all around. It's so funny to look at like different how people present themselves on social media, um, especially actors and actresses. Yeah. I mean, some are very like the spill everything and then others are very um, guarded as to what they share and, yeah, yeah. you know, and things like that. So it's just interesting, but yes, it can feel very intrusive. Um, yeah. Social has, media is a pretty intrusive place. Yeah, definitely. Lots of opinions. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's okay. People are allowed to have their opinions. People also need to remember that, that, 
a little bit of respect goes a long way, kids. It really yeah. does. You know, and I, I, I brought up an analogy on the last one about um, people feel entitled to a certain level of access uh, to your life because they know you from a job that you did. And I'm just like, this is a weird job. I get that as, a, as an actor. And I may not be an actor for forever. Who knows? Um, it's just, I've worn many hats. This is the one that I'm wearing right now. It's been a good hat. Don't get me wrong. I like it very much. I hope it stays. But, uh, but imagine, I think the analogy I used, because we were talking about restaurants. I worked in restaurants for forever. Imagine yes, you, you were talking dinner. about the, about the bar and if you had a waiter. Yeah, system, like imagine you went out to dinner and you really hit it off with the waiter because you had one friendly conversation and you decided that because of that conversation that you guys had, that you're now best friends and you're going to wait for them outside Buddies. the restaurant for their shift to be over. <laughs> So that Not you guys creepy can at all, right? Afterwards. And I'm like, just but just think about that for a minute, though. That's creepy, right? Cool. Yeah. So trying to figure out where celebs are or something like that, and then just like showing up at their haunts and things like that. Super creepy. Not a good way to start a friendship. You're not going to show up and have them be like, oh, my God. Like, no, dude, they're going to like call the cops or something like that. Because I don't know, you know. That's weird. It's weird. Okay. So weird when I was on the soap. I, in the beginning, didn't go to, any, I mean, in the beginning, I didn't go also because nobody knew who the hell I was. I think everybody was just waiting to see how long it would take them to fire me. Oh, um, oh man, every day, every day, there would be people attacking me. You're dog shit actor. Get the fuck off our show. Blah, blah. Like, dude, soap Twitter was intense. I'm not talking about like, we don't really like you. In the beginning, I wasn't doing any of the meet and greet stuff just because, I don't know, it, to me, I was like, I, I I'm nobody, man. Who's it kind of see me? Like, it feels presumptuous that I would show up and charge people to see me. Right. Um, and, and I thought that by participating, that it would be me basically, you know, thinking my shit don't stink or something like that. Come to find out, not participating is the thing that makes you come off a little bit snooty because they really are a lot of fun. And if you're mindful of it, and I try to be, I want to make sure that all of the people who attend get their money's worth, you know? Like, I know that it's more than just the ticket price. Not all of the people at Rama Drama in West Palm live in West Palm. There's going to be people that traveled there. They flew there. They drove there. They drove there. They, they got a hotel room. They, they got to eat. They got to drink. They got to, it's a pricey weekend, you know? Yeah. So, you know, as a guy that basically worked for a radiant heating company and used to install toilets and fix pipes and do stuff like that my life has changed a fair bit since then don't get me wrong but um but yeah when i go to these things i want to make sure everybody has a good time uh it's a little strange now because now we've got covid and all kinds of yeah. stuff like that to contend with it's gotten a little bit more difficult because i'm you know i'm pretty gregarious when i come to these i'm gonna hug people and we're hang out sign stuff we'll have a good time I want us to have a good time uh, but Rama Drama is super fun. We'll have a good time. It's a good bunch of people. Uh, they really are. I jumped in Tyler Hines' line last time just for shits. <laughs> the Heinies are a talkative bunch, man. Well, I yeah, I mean, they have a pretty big presence. Um, yes. It's, yes, it's they do. a little intimidating. I'm not going to lie, especially because I was like, um, don't ever go into a group like that and be like, so what movie is he in? Because <laughs> yeah. they're oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like you want to talk about bad comments. Like I thought I was going to get oh, yeah. pushed out of the group. Um, yeah. No, they're, yeah. they're, they're harmless. They're just very, they're protective of their, of their fandom. Whoever they, they like, baby pack, all super nice people. Yeah, they really are. Like it, it may seem a little bit strange from the outside, but like hop in, have a drink yeah. with them, something like that. They're, they're a good bunch. And we're lucky to have groups of people who like what we do, you know, like if they don't like what we do, I don't get to do it anymore. So, so yeah, I mean, it's a little strange at first, not because I'm calling them weirdos, but just it feels weird to me to be like, Oh my God, if people came to see me, why? <laughs> I'm, I'm nobody, but but it's fun and it really does and because you like that warm feeling of like oh you know what they like that thing that i that movie that i made that was cool yeah i worked really hard on it so <laughs> that's yeah. cool same thing with my jewelry like oh they like that yeah, thing exactly. i worked really hard on it so yeah well i mean i think you are somebody i hear you say that a lot you're like oh i just don't you know i'm glad people just like but to I, hear but I mean you know, it it's like, just a, it's just a job man and like someday that job might fire me 
I never get another film ever again. And then I, and then I'm just one of those guys. It was like, Oh yeah, I remember that. That was a long time ago. And if yeah. that's the case, then that's the case. Cause what a ride, man. But yeah. it's just a job. You know, I've had a bunch of jobs. Well, let's talk about that. I find that interesting because there's so many actors who do other things within the acting world, right? So they're writers, they're producers, they're, yeah. you know, all of that jazz. And I know you started out with modeling, you know, didn't come from God, a family was a that was I into was like performing model. arts. Yeah. Yeah. I was a terrible model. No. Jesus. <laughs> so yeah. I'm, just, I'm just curious, you know, how, how you fell into the Hallmark realm. Like how did that, um, we were, I was on the soap and I, and I auditioned. I still remember the day that I went to the audition. Um, and I, I auditioned to play like a supporting role of some sort. Um, you know, you go to these things and there's often the sides and the character names and all that stuff. They're, they're dummies. It's not for an actual film. They just want you to come in and do something and see if you suck. And if you don't suck, then maybe they might think about working with you to some degree down the line. And there's like a bunch of tests. So I went in and I, and I did the thing. And I remember it was hot that day. And I took my bike. And I remember sitting on my bike and, and calling my managers afterwards. Because there's always that question. I'm like, how'd it go? How'd it go? I'm like, shit, dude, I don't know, man. I went in, I did my thing. I left. I, this, <laughs> I don't know. I think it went fine. Um, and, and then I went home. And we didn't hear anything for a while. And then I found out I booked the role. And unfortunately for everybody, about a week or so after I found out I booked that role, I got in a really nasty motorcycle accident on Angeles Crest and I almost lost my right hand. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's a fun Gosh. fact. When I got up off the ground, my right hand was facing the wrong way a little oh. bit. Oh, no, it gets worse. Check this out. This is something I'll remember until I die. I got up off the ground because I was really messed up, but I wasn't in a lot of pain. And then I turned it so that it was kind of facing the right way again. And then I put what was left of my arm in my shirt like that oh, so that it would like kind of hold it like upright. Swing, yeah. Yeah. And then I went running up the mountain to go find my friends because we had gone hiking that day. Um, and I remember one of them jumping out of the car and being like, what are you doing? Why are you walking? And I'm like, yeah, we gotta go to the hospital. And then he saw it. He was like, oh, okay, okay, um, okay. Like, and it was, it was, oh man. So, and I remember sitting in the hospital that night. I, the first phone call I made was to Frank Valentini at a uh, general hospital. And he was really lovely with his concern about their shoot schedule. Um, and then I called my managers and I was like, we got to call Hallmark, man. Like, I'm in the hospital. I'm really messed up. My, I got to have surgery. Like I, I can't film right now. And I was so down on myself. Um, we'll have to, I'll have to jump on your mental health one too. We can talk all about uh, self-hate and depression and all kinds of stuff like that. That's been my cross to bear since I was born. Um, so I can get really hard on myself. And I remember sitting in my hospital bed and just being like, you just, you burned this bridge and it was a good bridge. It was a really good bridge. And you ruined it, you know? And so I went back to work uh, a few weeks later. I didn't miss any days, which I'm sure made, uh, made Frank very happy. And um, I forgot all about it. I didn't think I was ever going to get a call again. Because that's, I mean, this industry is kind of that way. It's so saturated with people who want to work in Hollywood that it's not a terribly forgiving industry if you screw up like that that's kind of it. You kind of get the one chance and then it's done. So I, it, it was hard, but I kind of just let it go, you know, and life went on. And then about a month and a half, maybe two months later, I was eating dinner uh, next door to a restaurant I used to work at with some friends. And my manager calls me, Todd, and he's like, hey, are you sitting down? And I'm like, yeah, why? And he's like, so Hallmark called and you have a film offer. And I didn't even know what that meant. I was like, what do you mean I have a film offer? Like I have pages, do you, I, I'm at a restaurant right now. Should I go home and like start memorizing stuff? He's like, no, 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 dude, you have a film offer. Like they want to make you an offer for a film and you're going to be in it. And I was just like, well, we said yes, right? What did we say? Like, <laughs> and that was Unleashing Mr. Darcy. 
Nice. So the the short answer to my or the short version of my long story was I auditioned for a part that I had to back out of because I wrecked my bike and I guess they they wanted to work with me on something else and we got a phone call and and that was it that was Darcy that that changed everything man. Well, let's talk about motorcycles because let's talk about bikes. I, well yeah well I texted my dad last night and I'm like dad, what kind of Harley do you have? Like, I can't remember like what it is. Yeah. Um, and now I have to look it up, but it's a Harley. It's a road glide. Okay. Road glide CBO. Like a big bagger. CBO. Okay. So yeah. CBO is Harley's high end package. They, they change oh. a bunch of stuff in the guts on the bike. Oh. Um, CBO is good bike. Okay. Road glide. There you go. Yeah. CBO. That's, yeah. that's a no joke bike. That's I like a good. big bike. Yeah. I have a bunch of bikes. I have little bikes. I have big bikes. Um, I got attacked by some of the Heinies the other day because I think I, I called Tyler Heinz's bike a bicycle. Oh boy. It well, was a joke. It I mean, was a joke. It was a joke. I love Well, Tyler. to clear that up you, here, I'll make sure to tag them in this little podcast so they can listen to your apology. <laughs> some of them even found their way into my emails and they were just like, oh, no. and I was just like, you guys, you remember when we had a sense of humor? Do you remember that? It was yeah. a joke, dude. I will ride with that kid any damn time. He's great. Anyways um i like bikes i like big bikes i have actually when i when i go up to canada to film i usually will pad my schedule on the tail end for a few days to go for a little bit of a ride because it's beautiful up there and all of my buddies up in canada they're all transpo and we're all we're all grunts together and we have a good time but some of them have been really kind to like take me basically on guided rides because they all ride you yeah. know so and that's what I'll do. I'll go to like Eagle Rider or one of those things, you know, Eagle Rider, they maintain huge rental fleets. It's difficult sometimes to find bike rentals, easy to find a place to, to buy one, but to rent one can get a little tricky and pretty pricey too. Pricey, yeah. Um, so I usually try to, you know, like a weekend will cost you a thousand dollars, a three day weekend or something like that. So yeah. I try to keep the rides kind of short because that gets pricey. Right. Uh, contrary to common belief, I am not spectacularly wealthy. I, <laughs> My mom Googled my net worth one time, and apparently I'm missing a lot of money. <laughs> where I don't did know it where go? It is. Did your mom call it. you and be like, um, hello? <laughs> Somebody I sent me you. an article one time that General Hospital paid me $400,000 an episode. And I was like, I don't think General Hospital paid me $400,000 for the entire time I was on the show, ever, <laughs> including For your, your contract? You didn't make that? No? No, no. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I'm like, I, you know what, if that's the case, then we got to have a talk because I'm missing like several million dollars and I could really use, I think we could all use a spare several million dollars. Million dollars? Right now. That would be yeah. rad. Um, think to go back to the bikes. Think of all the bikes. Think of, think all, of the all the bikes. You could like have, you could buy a space and have a whole shop. <laughs> I know, Just man. Dedicated without putting there the anvil a, on your lap with yoga mats. It could be amazing. Bike. See, I, that's my main reason for wanting a house. And then we'll go back to bikes is a place where I can put the anvil on the ground and hit the damn thing and not in my lap, which yeah. would be rad. And also God, I need a dog. I need a dog more than any human being on the face of the planet. I was going to talk to you about Just animals. Pathetic. Yeah. No, pets, um, huh? no, no, but there's a dog down the hall. It's kind of my dog. Oh. Stella, babe. I get to babysit her today for an hour. Oh man. Maybe like the two. Best therapy ever. It's great. She just comes over and naps in my lap. It's the oh, best thing ever. And licks like, my nose. Yeah. Oh, I'm gross. Like, like I go, I, I'm gross. I like let dogs lick oh, my mouth. Yeah, That's the thing. I, I don't care. I love, I, I love them. And they come up and they want to give me love. And I'm just like, yeah. oh, I go, but I so need it though. Give yeah. me kisses. And I go, oh. <laughs> oh man. But there is, if we, yeah, there is a bike out there that if I had my, if, if money wasn't an option, wasn't an item, wasn't an issue. Um, Keanu Reeves' company, Arch Motorcycles, has a, a number of models, and they're all to a degree bespoke, meaning that they don't just have like, they don't just crank them out. You, you're very involved in the building of a bike, so that they're all fairly custom. But they have one bike that they're only going to make 23 of total, called the Method 143. Um, and it's insane. It's a powerhouse bike. It, uh, it'll outrun a helicopter. It's insane. Like the tech that goes into this thing. And Unfortunately, it's uh, it's MSRP is like one hundred and fifty thousand dollars or something like that. So it's unlikely that I'll ever own one of those things. But every so often, I see it on Instagram, and I'm like, oh my god, look at that bike! 
Yeah, I wrote uh, it down because I want to look it up. Look at it. Method 143 okay. by Arch. It's insane. It's insane, man. It's got like tungsten in it and aircraft aluminum and a huge engine. I think the engine is over 2,000 cc's for a bike that looks like a sport bike. I got a Harley out here that's 2,100 cc's, but it's a big yeah. thing. You know, it's been right. that much power on a little bike. Jesus, you that's a death machine, man. But I can't. Do you modify your I, bikes? Like, do you change things sure. out? Yeah. All of it. All of it. Yeah. Okay. For sure. Yeah. The moment the bike is mine, we start ripping pieces of it off and switching them. Very cool. I have, and I have at this point, like I have a mental vocabulary of I like this set of products from this company. I like these bars. I like that highway bar. I'm waiting on uh, uh, wheels and an, uh, and an exhaust system for my, my Road King. Um, I'm still learning to love that one. It's, an, it's the newest of my bikes to replace one that I lost not that long ago which sucks. So I got, um, not to make a big deal out of it. I got hit by an SUV about two, a month and a half, two months ago on my soft tail, Morgan. I name all my bikes. I was just going to say, do you name your bikes? <laughs> yeah. I haven't named this one yet. We're still learning each other. Um, and it sucks. Cause like literally 60 seconds before I got hit, I was coming back from the UPS store. I dropped off some, uh, some, uh, orders for Wanderer and I was headed home to come back into the shop and make some more stuff. Um, and I was just sitting there on my bike and I was thinking like, God, I know Harley makes a bunch of like newer, bigger, badder, whatever's, but I love this bike. I'm never going to get rid of this bike. And then like 60 seconds later, some guy uh, swung a left through a cone zone right next to a no left turn sign. Cause they're ripping up the street down there. And I knew it too. I was going, I wasn't, I wasn't even going fast. I was kind of close to my house and I was just chilling. It was warm. Sun was on my skin. I was having a good day. I will admit that I do ride like a hooligan sometimes, but I wasn't in this particular case. And I just, you know, when you see a bunch of motion in front of you, but one bit of that motion just seems off a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I was going through and I was like, that guy's going to make a left and I'm going to hit him. I, this is going to happen. Fuck. All right. And he did it. And I had a minute of like, here we go. And I have video of it too, actually flew over the handlebars, did a couple of like, like a half a front flip and a couple of tuck and rolls on the ground and then just took off running after this guy because I thought he was going to run. Um, it ended up pretty not working out for me very well and I had to come out of pocket for quite a bit because he ran away to England, um, which is unfortunate for me. But here we go. And I'm on this big thing and I'm waiting for parts for it. So I don't know if my Wi-Fi will hold up. I'd walk out there and show you. But she needs a bath. She got rained on the other day. Oh, boy. I got all those like, yeah, Jackson Pollock sure. of dust on my bike yeah. right now. What color is that? Black? Everything is black on black on black. It's kind of my, black, yeah. my color. I wore black for you today. Hey. I don't typically wear black. I'm a little I appreciate you know, it. pink, frilly, la la la. But I was like, <laughs> mm, maybe I should find my little black thermal I live that in, I wear. I live in like life. earth tones. See, like, <laughs> like my, my chair is like a lovely shade of light black. It, it is. I'm loving your plant like situation. Cheerful like, black. I, it's really funny. I, every time I do Zoom stuff here, I feel like I'm in an episode of Between Two Ferns. Two Ferns. I was just going to say that. I was just. I didn't realize that. it until I stuck them there the first yeah. time, and I sat down. Like, and I was it's like, like Ryan that's, between two ferns. Yeah, it, that's it what really, this is now. It is. That's what this is now, and I can just see Zach Galifianakis oh. like sitting next to me and being like, "Are you aware that you make terrible movies?" <laughs> and I was like, "Well, you were a terrible model. Do you remember?" I was Have you in seen your face? <laughs> so yes, I was aware because I was there the whole time. Oh man, that's <laughs> too funny. It's too funny that those shows are crazy. Oh man. Have you seen the bloopers from that show? No, it, it, I don't think I've ever like seen the bloopers. Seriously asking them questions that are super fucked up like that. Yeah, but yeah. he's not. He's just kind of, I mean, he's a comedian and they're obviously they're in on the joke. They're just like, just so you right. know. He's his the whole purpose of this is he's just gonna say stuff that just makes you and everyone watching super awkward. Yeah. But that's the thing. He's not legitimately attacking you. It's all in in comedic thing. But the bloopers are great. Oh, man. I have to look My up favorite the thing is is the bloopers from stuff that's already funny. Like when the funny people can't even keep their faces straight. Like yeah. so good. Then, then it's good. Then it's good. Um oh we didn't talk about guitars. <laughs> guitars i have a bunch of them i'm not very good at them i know but i heard i've heard you play a little bit of dust in the wind and that is like one of my favorite 
all time. I love that song. That song is so great. So great. Yeah. Do you know that in, do you know that a Rama Drama we're doing a karaoke night? Oh God, you guys are. I'm not. Oh, it's with the celebrities, friend. So I'm no, pretty no. sure. Uh -huh. You're gonna here's have to reach out to Gabriel. <laughs> here's the here's here's the thing about me. Um you can't make me do anything. Oh, I I am I yes, I, I would agree with that hundred percent. I so. yeah. But I'll be celebrity bartender that night. There are plenty of people there who can sing and play guitar. Tyler, you want somebody to sing and play guitar? Wes Brown. Yes. Andrew Walker, I think, does it. Uh, Jesse Metcalf does it. Trevor Donovan does it. I'm, I'm, I am actually wildly um, insufficient resume-wise in, in the presence of these guys. I can't sing and play guitar. I can't even talk. And, I can't even play guitar. Like, I can play, like, 35 seconds of dust in the wind and a smattering of spanish guitar here and there and then there's like a handful of things that like i've made up that kind of suck and then that's about it so i gotta and that's kind of my fault honestly i i've had plenty of time to practice but i spent all my time in my shop i feel guilty because my guitar is looking at me right now and it's like you have not picked me up ryan <laughs> It's just looking at me. I got side eye from my guitar. I like the ukulele too. Those are like, yeah, so I love I got that. one of those. I got two of those actually. Oh, you have two? Oh, nice. Yeah, here, I'm gonna grab one. I love yeah. ukuleles. Oh, uke. This one's really pretty. I like this one. Yeah, they're like pieces of art. They're so, oh, oh, that is pretty. Oh, I love that. Oh, the grains in that are fantastic. Yes, yeah, mango. It's mango wood. Oh, that is so you know? cool. And I always thought ukulele tuning was so weird. Like, but it's kind of like. Yeah, I like, I like ukes, man. They're kind of fun. And they're such happy, whimsical. I did not make that song up, by the way. It's a piece of a song um, that a friend of mine, Amber, made up ages ago. And I, it was the first time I'd ever heard like like a ukulele thing that wasn't at a luau. Uh, yeah. I was like, what is that? That was cool. So she was cool enough to teach me a little bit of it so that I could say I at least knew how to do one thing on this thing that I bought. Yeah. So, but yeah, I, I love them. They're, they're great whimsical little, uh, little in instruments that just have this like really happy energy. And they always make me think of Hawaii and I love the islands. So yeah. I'm Hawaii due for a trip one of these days. Yeah. One of these days. Yeah, I hear you. Well, just circling back to you saying that, you know, you're not a great singer, not a great, let me tell you something. Oh, no. you, yeah, but uh, I just want to say that if I bet you a million gazillion dollars that Trevor Donovan yeah, cannot I can make a, a ring. Gazillion dollars. I know, but I'm just telling you, Trevor Donovan cannot make a ring. I'm really no. not sure that, no. They're not no, doing that. No, we have different. I mean, yeah, well, I mean, we have different. We have different skill sets. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. But but in my line of work, to be a showman like that, to be a performer, like I grew up surfing and stuff like that, and then it's certain the in the oceanic world there are like surfers, but then there's like watermen. Watermen, they're like they're great swimmers. They know how to surf. They can kayak. They can stand up paddleboard. They can windsurf. Like they're just that's their element, and they can do that. You know, I can come to a set and memorize a bunch of lines, but I'm not a showman like that. I'm a terrible dancer, can't sing, don't play any instruments really. Like, you know, so then you sit in a room with these guys over here and they have like, some of them have albums and like, and I'm like, yeah, cool. Um, I can sweat pipe. Let me show you how to, how to solder. Your collection's coming out. Like you're so yeah. That's amazing. Like it's I really do, amazing. I do some other stuff, and I and yeah. I I'm getting I'm getting a little better in the shop, which is nice. I have made a couple of things where I was like, okay, that looks kind of cool. I hope so because I've seen a lot of your stuff, and I think most of it is amazing and very cool. So <laughs> I, I yeah, and it's not easy. That stuff is not easy. No, it's not, and it's painful. Like, people don't understand. Like when they say blood, sweat, and tears, no, dude. Like I'm bleeding and on like, fire. Yeah, like, like I got cut with a piece of metal. Like it literally, I'm <laughs> bleeding into this. Arc. I clean it. Everything goes into an acid bath before it goes oh, home. There's no like, DNA know. being shipped to yeah. anybody or anything like that. Yeah. If people understood how much buffing and polishing and cleaning and stuff went to into a piece after it was already done, like it's done now. 
I still have like an hour or so of stuff that I've got to do to make sure that everything is like shiny and you got to get into all the little nooks and crannies and yep. I've got all these tools now and oh yeah yeah it's so cool though it's so cool it's fun I really like it and it the more I do it the more respect I have for people who like really do it like I'm not making diamond engagement rings although I did buy a bunch of white sapphire to practice setting um it is the second uh, favored alternative, diamond alternative. Uh, they judge clear stones like that based on their refractive index, mm -hmm. how, much, uh, how much light goes back after it goes in. Diamonds are, are actually not the most brilliant stone out there. There's another stone called moissanite that looks almost exactly like diamonds, but is much shinier and significantly cheaper. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And then white sapphires. Those are both kind of the two stones right now that for people who really want to have like a big rock for their engagement ring, but they don't want to shell out $8,000 for a huge pear cut diamond because De Beers right. told you that diamonds are rare. Correct. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, there, are, there are stone alternatives and white sapphire is one of them. Um, I'll probably buy some moissanite as well. But I just, you know, I'm, I'm practicing. I'm learning new stuff and and you're just working fun. with silver are you going to work with any other metal like any i'm definitely going to work with other metals gold will join in i at this point have invested in enough stuff in my shop that i can probably alloy on my own um so if i buy casting grain gold i'll be able to make my own mixtures like rose gold is a combination of gold that's and my favorite. copper yeah um and i can do that um i could mix it with sterling silver to give it a paler depending upon the purity of the, the casting grain that I purchase, uh, we could go down to 14 karat, which I like better. Um, pure gold looks wet all the time, like solid honey. Yeah. And it's, I don't like that as much. There's a time and a place for it. Don't get me wrong. Very classic, especially when it's got a high sheen, a buff, like a single diamond solitaire on it. Yeah. Looks great. But I've always liked the paler, more matte finish stuff, 14 karat has an almost pastel hue to it. Like they've included some white in that honey. Yeah. Um, and I think it softens it a little bit. I always found pure gold to be a little harsh to the eye. And you can still get 14 karat gold buffed to a high shine. It's just a little bit less intense. Yeah. But yeah, there's plans to work in gold um, and probably white gold. I just, you know, when you make a mistake in gold, it's an expensive mistake. Yeah. So I really want to make sure that I, I know my stuff before I start spending money on things like that. And I'll have to buff uh, Wanderer's website a little bit as well, because the moment we start working in gold, I can't set Labradorite in gold. You can't set stones like that in gold. So everything gets much more expensive. And I'll have to put in things like Afterpay or something like that on the website because those prices will be significantly higher. Not because I'm tooting my own horn, but gold is thousands oh, of, i think it's 1700 an ounce or something like, yeah. i don't know i don't i don't follow the gold market but i could google it right now it's a lot um so yeah i mean as the pieces get more refined and the materials get more refined they'll get more expensive so it'll require a little bit of infrastructure retooling on my end um, to make it easier for customers to buy items like that that are super expensive and when i do start using gold and more expensive stones and things like that that's not going to be the only thing that I do. There will still be plenty of stuff at its present price point right now um, that are that, that, that'll be accessible. I'm just learning, man. I'm just learning. This is not a get rich quick scheme over here. I just like making stuff and then I get in there and I'm like, okay, I've learned how to do this. It's time to go and learn a new thing um, this time. So. so they can go to fortunatewander.com, get on your mailing yes. list. That's the way. But do not send you any hate mail because you will be blocked and you I'll will never know anything that is going on. So nope. when do you have a release for your next collection? Like when yeah, I, I wanted to, I feel a little dumb on this one. I wanted to do a jewelry release for Valentine's Day. Um, oh. But I'm, I'm running real low on those little black jewelry boxes that I've got. I've got enough to like keep me afloat for a while. Don't get me wrong. And some people have been really kind and offered to send some back. Um, it's okay. I, we're actually going to go with a different designer. I was going to order some more. So the story goes a little bit. I have a front closet in my living room and I thought I had two big crates of them that contained 500 boxes in each one. Huge. Okay. So I thought I had a thousand more. Right. Um, 
and after the last collection and I got everything shipped and I cleaned up my office and I was like ready to begin the next one, the one that I'm presently making right now, I was going to go restock all of my boxes. And I go in there and I pull those boxes out. And I'm like, those boxes aren't boxes of boxes. I'm like, oh, okay. So, no. so I don't have any more. Okay. All right. Well, that was dumb. And then I contacted the company that made them for me and they went out of business in COVID during COVID. So I'm like, awesome. So I don't have any more. And the company that makes them for me doesn't exist anymore either. This is cool. Uh, but it's cool. I got new ones. I uh, had the sample sent. They look great there. I think they're a step up. I think they're a superior product before. So that's good. It's always nice to have nice packaging. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm just waiting for them to ship at this point. It, I placed a really significant order. So this time I will have thousands of extras. So it's taking them a while to manufacture all of them. But I actually wrote the guys an email the other day where I was like, listen, you don't have to ship my whole order at once. I'll pay additional shipping. If you've got like 500 units ready right now, send them to me. I'll take them. How many so, pieces are in your collection? Um, so I usually won't do a collection. So that's like, like you said, that's the way the website works. Is that I, I work for a while and I make up a bunch of stuff, a big collection of things. Right. And when I feel like there's enough there that it's kind of worth doing a collection, because if you know if it's twenty pieces, yeah. gone instantly. Um, I'll usually try to do a collection where there's at least forty unique items. Um, some of which will have more than one. Like I'm going to have a raven skull in this one here. I had some raven skulls casted that are kind of cool. A little different, but you know what? And maybe skulls aren't your thing. That's cool. Don't buy them. Right. Um, but I think they look really rad. So I'm going to whip up probably 20 or 30 of those um, and string them up. Um, but yeah, so I'll do a big collection. And my benchmark has always kind of been about 40. Once I, once I get to about 40, we're good to go. At this point, I have probably 30 something items made that are ready. I'm just waiting on the boxes. Um, I know it's been a while and I do feel a bit delinquent uh, about a collection, but as soon as those boxes show up, we'll be ready to go. And it'll be a big collection because I've had a bunch of time at this point and not much else to do. You know, Filming's a bit slow right now. Um, Hallmark has undergone some changes internally um, and it's, uh, it's being proving a little tricky, I think, to orchestrate filming in the in the wake of that. Um, international travel is sticky these days, so trying to figure that kind of stuff out. But movies are coming. I think I'm going to take off to film something end of March. Nice. So until then, I'm going to work in my shop, and I'm really, really hoping the boxes show up before then so that I can get this collection out of my office and into people's homes before end of March when I take off for a film. So, but until then, it's bikes and, and rings. <laughs> this will be a, this collection will definitely be really heavy on rings. I don't know why. Just when I'm in the shop these days, that's what I want to make. So that's what I make. Very cool. Used to be only necklaces. So you just kind of got to go where you feel inspired. Yeah, yeah. So, that's that's what makes those beautiful pieces. Well, I'm excited know, for you. I think it's so awesome. I got to get out on the bike a little bit too. I have I have been shut away for a while. I'm like super pale and kind of gross oh, oh, yeah yeah i gotta get outside <laughs> unrecognizable and right like. no <laughs> yeah. i just don't feel like myself as much these days i had a, a thought the other day where like i went out to check my mail and i was like this doesn't really count as going out no no you gotta go like it's been a while since i've been on a hike or something like that i need to go like move my legs so yeah but I'll get around to it. I'm a workaholic. It's hard, man. I walk past my shop and I'm kind of just like, uh, maybe just for a minute. I could do this thing. And then I'm there and I'll be there for like eight hours. And I'm like, I'm hungry. Yeah. And right. The day is like gone. Gone. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing about that kind of work is you're so, you get so focused. You just lose. Yeah. Time. Well, it's cool. You know, like I, I put my weird music on in the background that my neighbor hates. And, and then I, I just, you know, I sit there and I try stuff. All right, Probably before nice. I, before I let you go, because I wasn't going to do this because I was like, he's going to think this is really stupid. However, I cannot wait with that kind of preface. I Let's know, see. I know, I know. Um, so I usually play a game with my guests. It's like a this or that game. It's four okay. questions. It's like your priority. It's super. It? Su okay, so the first one is, and I think I already know the answer. Um, flip flops or sneakers? Flip flops. Yes. Okay, breakfast or no breakfast? Breakfast. Yeah, I, I heard when I watched your or listened to your interview with Paul, Cheerios with sliced bananas. 
Oh, dude. I mean, that's that a is good like, one. That's a good that one. Is... I also never met a breakfast burrito I didn't like. And now that I've oh. said that, I'm going to have a breakfast burrito. Breakfast burritos are so good. I had some quiche this morning and it was absolutely. Breakfast quiche. It's, it's like a breakfast so burrito in pizza form. It is. Oh, it was so good. Way. All right. What was the third? Third one is, um, oh, ice cream or cake? Oh, ice cream for sure. Really? Okay. Yeah. I'm not All like right. a breads guy. Okay. I like breads in pizza. And weirdly enough, I like big crusty bread with soup. Like that's oh. a thing. But like cakes and cookies and stuff like that, that's not my jam. Like candy okay. and ice cream is my jam. All right. Well, how about uh, salad or French fries? Oh, man. I should be healthy and say salad, but I like me some potatoes. Mm, I know. Me too. Potatoes are good. Do you have a preference? Do you like, I mean, I can't picture you as a guy that eats fast food, but do you? Oh yeah. Yeah, I do. I'm actually probably in the worst shape of my life right now. So it's probably a good thing that I'm not modeling and that Hallmark doesn't make us take our clothes off. <laughs> um, that was my, that was my, I actually had a minute the other day. I was like, all right, kid, like you're not fat, but you should probably, you know, you used to work out a lot. You should probably pick up some weights and I don't know, eat less Chipotle. Oh, Chipotle. Love it's so right. good though it's so, so good. good and they give you Dude. a burrito and it's their like burritos are like pillow. as big as your face it's so... well my thing my problem with the chipotle burritos is like it's like that big and i'll eat like like that much of it and then i'm kind of full but i'm like what am i gonna do i'm gonna save this much burrito or am i gonna throw it away no i don't want to yeah. save it because that's pointless i'm not gonna, gonna throw eat it away it. because i don't want to waste no. food so no, i'm gonna, you're eat, gonna eat, eat the whole damn thing and be then very I'm uncomfortable on my couch and yeah. i'm like uh, yeah, for sure. I regret, I regret it. <laughs> I regret it. I shouldn't have done that. Uh, for sure. I was going to go outside and do stuff, and I'm just going to sit here oh. and think about my stomach. Yeah. My stomach touching my stomach, just being oh, like, <laughs> but yeah, hopefully, the oh. breakfast burrito I'm about to order is not like a foot long and six inches oh, wide. Because no. I'll eat the damn thing, and then the day is gone. That's it. And I'm going to yeah. have to lay there on my side and contemplate calling the paramedics well you have that puppy coming over so i do you'll, you'll I probably do. be doing so that could anyway just spoon on my couch i mean that sounds like movies. the perfect afternoon <laughs> i think that video. i think that stella babe and i are going to watch cartoons for a couple hours today maybe maybe ones with puppers in them i don't know Aww. we'll see i'll find something I love she's it. pretty cute we also we play tug of war with her toys but i, I don't why don't we really go like that it's kind of fun. Nice. There you go. So you'll get some you'll get some, yeah. You'll, and you'll get some activity in today, you know. Yeah, it'll be good. That'll be my exercise. You know, All a right. 20 pound dog. <laughs> <laughs> she's a okay. she's a tiny little thing. Yeah. Oh, well, that's okay. That's okay. That's all right. I love her face. Yeah. So, sure. yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting out there and, and getting some sand between my toes and some of the uh some of the Atlantic air on my face and some gator bites. Gator bites, yes, they. Gator bites, we got, is good. We, we've got those for sure. I like it. For sure. I like it. I like it. I never met a. I never met a chicken nugget shaped food I didn't like. <laughs> More so, than gator. Yeah, gator it. good. Oh, it's great. It's great. It's like chicken nuggets but fish. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Yep, that's exactly what it is. And now I want gator bites, but I can't get them here. No, cannot so. get those there. You're just gonna have to settle for your breakfast burrito. I'm super excited about my breakfast burrito, by the way. Awesome. Like, pumped. There's like <laughs> five relax. places in LA I know, and I know exactly which one I want this morning with some awesome. cafetillo. Yeah, that's right. Because you're three hours. Yeah, it's still breakfast time where you are. So, yeah, it's like late breakfast. I actually already had breakfast, but I'm going to have second breakfast. There you go. So, it could be brunch, but will you have lunch too? 11 Z's. 11. You know, lunch, dinner, <laughs> supper. <laughs> Those are bulls, right? So. <laughs> Uh, a little dose of lord of the rings nerd this morning so good love it well friend have a really um have a great afternoon with the puppy breakfast burrito and breakfast burritos i mean I'm super and puppies pumped. doesn't get any better than that no burritos sure and you... puppies my day is going to be a good day and i will end up back in the shop because i have an yeah. idea i want to try today so nice and nice why well, i look Bunch forward to, to seeing it so yeah. awesome Awesome, awesome. I like it. Well, keep me posted about all the, all the deets on this one, and then maybe we'll do the uh, we'll do a mental health one at some point. I would love That's something that I've kind of been meaning to talk to people about for a while. Well, then I am your girl. Let's talk about it because I think yeah. I think it's good. I think it's always good to to shine a oh, light on sure. that. 
So. No, I'm in this. I'm in the same boat, and I think it's an important thing for people to talk about, and it's important for people to see people like us that they know from film and television, blah 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 blah, whatever, talk about things like this, in an attempt to destigmatize and normalize the fact that that this is something that we all deal with. This is a fundamental human experience that everybody experiences. It spares no one. Yeah, no, it you doesn't. Know? It certainly doesn't. Well, I'll reach out to. I'll reach out to your managers. Yeah, um, yeah, we'll be around. Okay. Awesome. My life is honestly not that exciting. Chances are we'll be between two ferns again. Oh, well, that's fine. I'm, 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 my commute to work these days is a couple steps, 20 feet, maybe. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. much it. Like that's why you're getting, that's why you're getting smushy. It's why you're getting smushy. You need to get out. You need to get out. I got yeah. a lot of, I do a lot of sitting these days, you know? know, and again, it's just not, I don't want to get attacked. I'm not attacking people with weight stuff or my, no, uh, no. I just know me. Yeah. I sit in my shop. I sit when I do interviews. I sit when I'm on the bike. <laughs> I sit when I play video games. Like I do a lot of sitting these days. Yeah. And I was thinking about unless I go climbing. Like I'm, I'm still pretty light on my. Feet. We didn't talk about yeah. that, but yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I love climbing. I I always have because it's really difficult. I'm a big fan of like unforgiving systems where if you do it right, you succeed, and if you don't do it right, you don't. And there's no arguing with gravity. So if you no, go there not. and you do it right, you will get to the top. And if you don't do it right, you're going to fall. And that's just the way it is. Same reason I like pool. Mm. I love billiards. I always have. Me too. Yeah. yeah. We got so much stuff that we can talk about. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll have yeah, to do a part. We'll have to do an, uh, so I guess we'll do another one. We'll do a part two and talk. Oh, yeah. My dad always had we it. We didn't so really fun. even talk about the bikes. I'll we didn't really. Next time. No. But we, I'll find some place that's got Wi-Fi about. and we'll do the whole thing from a bike. How's that? That would be so awesome. I mean, we have so much more to talk about, but I appreciate yeah. your time today very much. I yeah, will yeah, of course. Much for sure. And I'll be around. All right. We'll do it again. Awesome. We'll do a part two. We'll do we'll do a brain drain. We'll see you in uh, in and Palm West Beach, West Palm. Awesome. So. Thank you so much. In a bit. See you later. Bye. <laughs> Bye.